Hi, this is Gilda, and I'm from the Woolen Shed, and today we're going to go over a few different things you may have a few questions about as far as building this foal from my kit. Um, you know, it comes complete with an armature, and I'll show you how it's supposed to look when you come out when it comes out of the bag. And then we'll go through different wrappings, and there'll be short little segments, so there'll, there'll be plenty of stopping and starting. Again, this is my very first tutorial, uh, so bear with me. Thank you. All right, so when you pull the armature out of the bag, uh, it'll come in two pieces. It may, Basically, you'll have the head and the neck and the back and the two front legs, and then the second piece will be this hind leg along with the two lower legs which will basically jut out from below the body when the foal is completed. Um, the neck should have a little bit of a bend to it, an arch to it, and the face should have just a little bit of a bend to it inward. The back should have a slight curve just like the finished foal and then you have the shoulder, the elbow, the front legs, and then here you have a bend, and that would be the fetlock down to the little tiny hooves. And the back leg should basically roll around. Um, you might want to tuck it a little sharper at the hock. And then the inner part of the back leg should be just a little bit shorter than the outer and then as you see there is no armature on the other side uh, you're basically just going to build a little pillow um, no armature needed because then the back leg rolls around to this side so the next thing we're going to do is uh, build the hooves after you've gone and wrapped the armature with the um, pipe cleaners and then we'll get started again alright so you have your wrapped armature I'm just gonna work on the front uh, hooves for you I pulled off a little piece of the gray wool tiny thin little pieces nearly transparent you want to keep it flat and taut while you wrap and starting past the fetlock, you want to go down smoothly. And again, you can just keep building. If it's too thin, you can just keep building another piece down at an angle this way. And then you want to come right back up, making sort of a figure eight all the way back up to the fetlock. And I'm going to grab another piece. Another thin fine piece holding it again keeping it flat and close to the armature going down and going right back up until you have sufficient wool just keep applying the same method and cross and back up the firmer you wrap or the tighter you wrap and the smoother you wrap the less work you'll have to do as far as felting is concerned and being careful not to hit the armature because the needles are very delicate. You want to stab beside the armature just the very tip of the needle. Felt down. So it grabs into the, um, the pipe cleaner. That was a coarse needle, I'm sorry. I'm going to go with a finer needle.
And if you find that the wool is sticking to your felting surface, that means you're going all the way through and basically felting down to the mat. So that's why you just want to use the tip and just barely breach the surface of the armature. You basically just want to um, have the wool firmly felt to the pipe cleaner and then you can move on. And you have a little hoof. So I'm going to wrap the second hoof the same way. I have a little too much wool, but we're going to go with it. Keeping it flat. And notice how I'm going on an angle downward towards the hoof. Keeping it flat, wrap closely to the armature. You come down and then when you want to go back up, when you've gotten to the tip, then go ahead and make your turn, your figure eight turn, back up. And just wind this little piece. And if you notice, there's a little bit of a tab here at the end. We can just go ahead and tuck that under with our needle. Right into the previously wrapped wool. And there it goes. Perfect. I just pull that off for now. I'm just going to wrap it up. And grab another piece, just a small piece, and start again. You have little fuzzies sticking out. If you just kind of uh, horizontally comb the fuzzies over and then push in with your needle, the fuzzies will disappear. You have a much smoother wrap that way. Nope. All right, so once you have that worked out smooth and the shape the way you like it, we're going to uh, go ahead and wrap the, follow the next set of instructions to wrapping the legs, and then we will work on the knees. And I'll see you then.
Okay, I was going to just go ahead and wrap the upper legs on my own, allow you to do the same thing. But then I began to wonder if maybe here at the elbow, you might have built up too much bulk and caused a bulge. So I thought I would unwrap and show you that when you come down, you're first with your brown wool, keeping it flat and close. Again, want to maintain an angle going down and then an angle going back up in the opposite direction. Keeping it tight, you make your first wrap, but then if you keep wrapping here, you're going to wind up with like a, a you know, well, I guess for an animal, you would call it a capped elbow, um, which doesn't look natural. And it's going to be way too much bulk and then you won't be able to build up with the core wool, the bottom of the body. You won't be able to adjust the little leg and maybe make a bend in it. It just, it won't look natural. So, let me just show you how to get past that. Alright, so you've gone down, made an initial wrap, coming back up, keeping it smooth. Skip over the elbow completely and then coming behind, you know, going over, and I'm left-handed, I apologize, but coming over and you go behind or the inside of the leg, come back up the other side and wrap and go all the way up. And you want, to, you want the leg to just gently thicken towards the elbow and then gently thicken from the elbow to where the shoulder is uh, starting. And wrap down and go over. And then instead of coming back, you want to skip and co uh, come behind again the elbow to the lower leg. And wrap up. and then skip and I've run out of wool but if you notice you're getting a nice bend here at the elbow let me just tack it down a little bit okay grab a little bit more wool Probably a little too much. I'm going to just put a little draft to it, which is spanning it out. So it's a little transparent. And start here at the shoulder. And I'm going to go down the lower leg one more time. Over, I'm going to wrap one more time. Tighten, staying close and flat, and there's a little vegetable matter. Get rid of that. And behind the elbow, uh, behind the upper leg, on the inside, flip over, keeping, you know, just keeping it. I'm not twisting, I'm not turning or anything. I'm just coming and bringing it to the outside of the lower leg from the inside. And I'm going to go back up. And I'm going to make that the only other turn from my upper leg because it appears to be fairly thick. I'm going to wrap one more time very close to the elbow. Go behind. And wrap very close. And I'm just going to keep thickening the upper leg. All right, so now you've got a nice little angle. You don't have all that bulk. You have a nice forearm, upper arm to your full. Felt that down, do the other side. And okay, and then we'll come back and get an initial wrap following the instructions down the back and 
then I'll show you how to cross and make the shoulder. See? Alright, so I have about a 10 inch piece of the core wall and I'm just going to break it apart vertically using small piece and smooth it out a piece of vegetable matter okay and I'm gonna start wrapping the chest which is just a, you know, making an X or a, a figure eight. Go around right behind the neck, just a little bit, holding it with your finger. Probably don't need to worry about this vegetable matter because it's so, it's going to be so embedded, but we're going to get it out anyway. And we're going to come around, go underneath the elbow, In between the front legs, Here's a... apparently I'm just plagued with vegetable matter. In between the front legs and then cross above the opposite shoulder and go back down. Once you're around, then you want to Come back down underneath the chest behind the elbows, cross around again to the opposite shoulder going down between the back legs. Still going in the same direction. I'm going left to right again because I guess because I'm left handed. Keeping everything flat and sort of taut and close. Down between the legs, the left shoulder down between the legs up again and then the opposite shoulder should only have to do this a few times the piece of wool that I pulled was kind of thin and you just want to cover up the shoulder so it has a little bulk And I like the fold. You you know you don't want the the armature poking out. And we're going to make a little V here and a or maybe a Y for the chest. And I, you know eventually sculpt this into an actual shoulder blade and a little chest muscle. And basically with this armature and wrapping it with the core wool, you're just going to pre-shape what the, you know, the outcome of the fold will look like. So do this a few times and when you're happy, come back, we'll wrap the rest of the fold and then we'll follow, you know, step five and wrap the rest of the fold and uh, we'll continue. Okay, so should have something that uh, well resembles the Loch Ness Monster uh, once you've covered everything the neck should be a little thicker at the base where it ties into the shoulder keeping the curve and again you know following just the natural shape of a muzzle down to the jowl of the of the fold you know, should be a little wider and then more narrow towards the muzzle. Um, what we're going to do next is take out another, uh, well, about a 10 inch piece of core wool and kind of widen it out and we're going to roll it to about the length of the foal's underbody. And that'll that'll kind of uh, fill in the curve from the from the chest to the bottom of the rear, and just basically roll it up, 
you don't really have to roll it tightly just don't want to leave any loose gaps or anything in it dry fit it you know obviously that's a little too thick so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off a little and try it again which that looks a little better I'm going to pull some up around the chest and felt down so I'll see you after you felted your underbelly piece in just a few okay so I finished my underbelly you notice it's flat you know he sits pretty well now uh, still has the little curve to his back and so what we're going to do now is put that aside and we're going to grab the brown wool pull off a little piece uh, sort of measure the underneath of the jaw you want the length to be just a little bit, little bit longer than what the bottom of the muzzle is and we're going to just roll it up or fold it up and felt it flat using my coarse needle Turn it over. And if you notice, I'm not felting the very ends because I want to uh, adjust the size to fit perfectly underneath his jaw. And I also want to make sure it's wide enough. So I'll pick his jaw up and I'm going to place it under there and it looks fine. So what I'm going to do is just pull off a little past the end of his muzzle and I'm going to round that out and then at his jaw line I'm just going to get rid of that entirely. Alright and this muzzle end I'm just going to round because that'll be his lower lip and this will also be just about where the little ball goes per the instructions that makes his chin And as a suggestion, you can use a little wax or a little lotion, or if you have to, you moisten your fingers with a little water. And just grab a little piece of your gray wool. Make a little ball. Fold it up tightly. Place it down a little past the edge of his lip line. Tack it down. I'm going to use the other needle, the finer needle. I'm going to pick it up and show you how it'll look. So when you when you put it on, basically you're going to have it past the end of his muzzle, and it'll come up a little bit, and it'll also wrap the sides of his face somewhat, 
and there's his little chin but we're going to put a little gray wool on there and kind of blend it out and then felt it down and then we'll repeat the same sort of thing on the other side for the the top of his face except that will kind of resemble a kite and then it'll be blended as well and then we'll put on uh, his uh, his little features so I'm going to just take a little gray very thin piece of gray and I'm going to lay it over the little ball blend it out, fan it out so it blends away into the brown I'm just going to wrap that around And here we go. Place it on, put them upside down, put your little fold upside down. And then use your thumb to kind of hold it in place and start up at the muzzle because it, what'll happen is it'll just automatically slide backwards. So we just want to get that set so it's not moving. Going back to my coarse needle. Push up on the sides. Keep the little ball. That's his little chin. And then I'm just putting his lip closer to his muzzle and tacking it down. You can always apply a little more gray if it's, you know, if it's not covered enough for you. After we get the uh, his face on, the top of his top of his face here on. Yeah, he's a little muddled. So I'm just breaking a where am I? A few pieces here of gray. Just tack it down.
not even going to worry about that. All right, so now let's work on his, uh, his upper face. Pull off a little wool. And in the shape of a kite. So it's long enough. Just kind of dry fit it. And can you, I don't know if you can see the shape there. It does kind of resemble a kite. And the widest point will be where his little eyes go. So we're just going to kind of fold it over. Alright, so I'm leaving some width here at the, bo the bottom for his muzzle. Width at the eyes. And enough room to also to, to wrap around. So, go ahead and work on that. And then, you know, work on tightening up the chin a little bit. Make it a little more secure. And maybe if you want to put a little more gray on there, go ahead and do that. And follow the instructions for adding the, the blending of the gray here. And I'll get back with you in just a few. All right, so you want to grab just a little bit of wool. And divide it in half. The idea is to make two little puffy balls that are relatively the same size. And they're attached to each other. And place them high and wide. And the eye will go, you know, off to the front, but off center and lower than the majority of where you're putting this little fluffy ball because the little fluffy ball is going to be the bone that and socket that resides just above the eye, the actual eye. And you don't want to felt that down completely. You want to leave a little puff. So that you're able to sculpt out where you place the eye. And it looks like a insect at this point. Alright, so let's take the time and clip the eye, uh, clip the, um, the wire off the eye, leaving just a little bit of the wire jutting out from behind the eye. And when you cut the wire, cut it at a sh very sharp angle so it has a point to it and it will go into the wool a little easier. Alright, so in the time it took me to start and finish the eye, uh, my other, well, my phone decided to just up and uh, die on me. So I had to go out and get a new phone and uh, my uh, Bluetooth control does not work. So there'll probably be even more breaks in between my videos. But anyway. I've inserted the eye and then I kind of pushed and sculpted the, the little puffy balls to um, give it more of a, the eye a little more of a almond shape. And then what we're going to do next is apply the lids to the, to the eyes using the um, toothpick, uh, add the little white tear duct and then if you've decided that you're going to make an Appaloosa we're going to add a little bit of white 
um, around the eye to uh, represent the sclera, which um, is ex which is the white around the eye, and for Appaloosa, it's, it's exposed, and happens to be a breed characteristic. So, just take off a very fine piece of your black wool. Transparent, tiny little fuzzy, and this one's already wrapped. I'm gonna wrap the other end of my toothpick uh, and try to mimic this one, and hopefully they match and it'll be the two tops of each eye. That's a little long, so I'm gonna pull a little off. That's better. All right, just um, just take your fingers and then twirl the wool uh, in between your fingers. It'll help to smooth out and lock in the fibers so it doesn't completely fall apart on you when you pull it off this uh, toothpick. gently take it out and I usually like to take my fine needle and if I can find it and tack it down just a little bit not flat but kind of keeping that um, curved arch And gently pick it up and place it between the eye, between the eye and uh, you know what is the bone above the eye, and this will be the lid. Trying to find my fine needle right now, and that's that's all I'm going to use is the fine needle. And for purposes of time, I'm just going to pretty well just get this into place. But you want to spend some time shaping it and making it very firm. I'm just going to, this was long enough, so what I'm going to do is just wrap this to the bottom instead of making another little, little tube with my toothpick. moving on me. I still need to work with it. But again, I'm just trying to get this in so you have the idea of what it's supposed to look like. And I'm going to take a little piece of the white, just a little tiny itty bitty fuzzy, and roll it around in my fingers. and place it 
at the duct. Just one little tiny bit. Honey fiber. Little tiny bit exposed. All right, so has a friend. Um, so just a little tiny bit in there. I don't know. I'm not sure if the video is picking that up. At all. But you know, just to emulate the duck, you have that white in there. twirling it around my needle tip and pushing it in with the rest of the white. All right, so Probably need a little, just a little bit more. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do the sclera, which is just, you know, roll a little tiny bit of, of the white in between your fingers. And you want to emulate the, the shape of the eyelid you just made. I'll pull this little end off. I might use it. I'm not sure. Make it still shorter. And because I didn't have it well felted, I lost it. The eyelid. That's that's one reason, other than you want, not wanting your sculpture to come come apart. <laughs> you, you know, you don't want to uh, have any gaps in between where the eye and the uh, lid and socket are. it around again. And if you notice, it gives the foal almost a human look. I'll take a little tiny bit of this white down here in the front. All right, so there's your little Appaloosa eye. Hopefully that's can be seen. Work on uh, doing the other eye and felting the area above the eye, the lid, the white, making it really firm, and then we'll continue. After creating the other little puff, the smaller one, for this underside, the other side of the body that does not get the armature with the legs. You want to line that up 
matching across with the other upper leg that you've already attached and then come down the spine and make sure your spine is straight and then set the puff on because what will happen is or what should happen is when you drop the fold into a natural position it should automatically just kind of fall to where all the weight is leaning on this left side back leg and once you have that lined up go ahead and begin felting cover any little areas that still need the core wool tighten up the uh the wool, you don't want to leave it loose and puffy. You want everything to have a nice firm feel to it. And then we're going to do the ears. Okay, I'm going to pull about a one and a half by two inch piece of brown wool. It's going to be the base to the, um, the base to the tail. And Fold it down in the middle just a little bit, flatten it out, fold one side of it, and I'll turn it over for you, um, fold one of the side of it in, and fold down, and then take the last side and do the same thing, fold it over and down. coarse needle and I'm going to just kind of fit it to the fold get an idea of length tail is going to be right about here and just want to make sure it's long enough it's a little long for the actual full an actual full but for this little guy it's fine and fold it flat I'm gonna take and fold this one side under So this is a bay foal and I've given you some merino, both white and, uh, and black. To play with. And I'm going to make a black tail here. Just trying to smooth it out, get all the fibers going in one direction. All right, and I'm just gonna pull a little bit gently. Just let it break on its own. Keeping it as straight as possible out. And pull just a little bit more. And it's a little long for a foal's tail, so what I'm going to do is, excuse me, I'm going to cut it directly in half, and then that's too blunt, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to then place the cut ends over top of each other with the blunt on one side, blunt on the other side, and I'm just going to sort of shuffle, stack, Reblend so that the uh, blunt end goes away. And you have a much softer looking tail. Then I'm going to hold the fibers vertically, going, you know, basically going right over the tail, what, what is supposed to be the tailbone. At the very end, at the very tip, I'm going to fold it down, or hold it down, 
and felt it, get it started. And I'm going to, uh, let's see. I'll see, I'm gonna run a monk because I forgot to pull more black. Okay, take a tiny, tiny bout of black. And then you can twist it or you can just hold it down and it's gonna go across then the tail. And this is what's going to be the anchor for the hair since it's not like a doll. It's not being rooted into anything so we're, it's not gonna come back out but we're going to just felt it down to the surface. And this helps to create a stronger felt and something for the merino to grab onto. Bring it down. And then felt. And then start the whole thing over again. Not Again, not needing very much, very fine amount. Cut it. And then the blunt ends go opposite. And we're just going to shuffle it, blending out the blunt end. And when it suffice, then we're going to go ahead and Lay it down. Just checking to see how much of a gap I have here. So I'm gonna go down just a little tiny bit more. A little closer to the other tail because it was too much of a gap between uh, between the hair spaces. Lay down my black felt, fold over, rinse and repeat. Take the ends and fold them over. Felt them through the back. No one's going to see the back, but then again it gets covered Anyway, it gives a fuller, rounder look to the tail. Looks like a lion's tail at this point. So you want to go all the way up, close to the base, or what's going to be the base of the tail. And then what you want to do, and I'm going to let you do this on your own, is felt it to the fold, holding the tail straight up in the air. And you want to use, again, the spine as the marker as to where you want to put the, you know where, where would properly put the tail you want it to be dead center high on the rear end so there you go and when you're done felting it down Fold it back over, and then you'll have the fibers. You should be having the fibers all the way to the top of the tail base. And then you just gently go around because you want the you want it to be fluffy at the tail base, so you don't want to flatten everything down and get rid of all that long hair work that you just put on for the tail. All right, and then the mane goes pretty much the same way as the back of the neck. And you wanna go all the way up, all the way up to the pole, starting at the top of the wither, which would be the top of the shoulder blade. Dead center, all the way up to the top of the pole, 
basically right in between to where the ears would be. The ears would be on the opposite side and it, because you want to create a little tiny forelock for the fold. So for the mane, pull out your tiny little weft of fiber. You may even be able to cut that three times. You know what, I'm gonna try that, let's do that. Cut it three times into thirds. There's one. Two and three. And I'm gonna blend out. A little less of an issue with the uh, demarcation line from the, the blunt end. Can have just a little bit, it's not going to hurt for the main. Thin it out, spread it out, then lay it across the center back of the main, or excuse me, the center back of the neck gently and take your long thin piece of black, twist it a little bit if you want, just for ease of handling. Starting at the wither, you wanna go ahead and hold that one end down. Wait, I'm gonna shorten this up a little bit. Hold the one end down, the other end on the other side, so you can keep your fingers out of the way. And felt everything straight down. Everything come back and you just want to kind of flatten out each side of the mane so it stands in the air. Turn the little guy over. Do the same thing. It's a little long, I'm gonna go in and carefully not to cut my fingers, not to cut the mane too short. I mean they're when they're newborns, you you know, they really have not much of anything to them as far as length. So you you could basically go as short as that. You know, I'd like a little I like a little hair, so I'm gonna leave it just a little bit longer. But anyway, I'm gonna go in on an angle. From the base of the neck, probably close to a 45 degree angle from the from the base of the neck. And I'm just gonna nip out little tiny pieces. You can see that on an angle. Pull that away, and now you have, well, you might have to do it a couple times. Look, he's making a liar out of me. Okay. And now you have a little tiny mane. So now what we're gonna do is pull out a little bit more wool. And 
and we're gonna create the ears. Pull out more, pull out a little more wool. Create the ears. Lay it out. Keep it fairly fine. And just kind of, you want to just stack in the center, thicken it up so it's not so transparent. And we're going to create an upside down V or a letter A. it up, turn it over, and repeat. Then we're going to fold one side of the letter A or the upside down V following the angle and it should work out to where it's within the other side of the fold. Fold down and do the other one. So a little, little TP is created. Fold over. Fold down, fold over, fold down. Alright, so now I'm going a little deep with that. If you notice it's felting right into the right into the surface. Uh, I'm gonna take my fine needle. And I'm going to felt down a little bit on an angle. Tightening the fibers and also flattening the fibers at the same time. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of the brown, excuse me, a little bit of the tan to the center of the ear and felt it, you don't want it coming out the other side, so felt it in, felt it in lightly. Just to add a little interest to the foal's ear. And then fold flat each ear from top to bottom, divide in half, fold flat. And number two.
All right, get the little ears where you want them. Using the edge that you, it was the bottom of the triangle or the bottom of the A, however you worked it out. I'm gonna shove this little tiny bit of tan right in there. He's trying to escape. We're not gonna let him have that option, okay. And at the top of the pole, I like to take one of my needles and use it as a place keeper while I work on the rest of the ear. It's where it's supposed to be. I just take it out, play with the position I want the ear in, which is fine for this little one. Felt the front. Side. What you're not going to want to do is make it look like it's, you know, a flat piece of, what, shapeless piece of felt just sitting up there. You want to let it have a little flare to it. Their little ears come to a tip. All right. And there's some shape to the back of the ear. It kind of curves around. Sort of like a, just keeping an eye on it. A uh, picture of banana, maybe, and how it's how it curves around. All right, so I'm just putting the one ear. Well, let's put the other ear on. So I flatten mine a little bit. Oh, lengthwise. There we go. Put down a little placekeeper. Felt down what I have held down with my nail. Around the ear. Take out the placekeeper. Felt a little bit down in the front. Two little adorable ears looking right at you. Okay, time for the fun part. Putting on the white, that's what makes this fold unique and one of a kind and completely yours. So we'll be taking the white and what I don't want you to do is grab it even though you're designing the fold to be yours, you do want it to look natural. So what you don't want to do is lay out little round blobs of color like this because it just doesn't look natural. Uh, whether you're doing an Appaloosa or a paint, you're gonna want to basically, the best way to go about it is in your mind, as you're going along, deciding on where you're wanting the white to be and following the chart, or maybe you found something uh, on the internet that you know you wanna follow to make your, your hair coat with. Either way, when you lay your white down, you're gonna kinda want it to lay as it wants to go. You can shape it, but if you leave the edges kind of jagged and free form, Where's my little soft needle? There it is. If you leave the edges soft and they kind of blend, just let them do what they want to do. I know this could be an Appaloosa with a bl little blanket. All right, notice how it, you're starting 
from the solid hair color you got starting a shape of the white you're going into the white but it's softened by the under color of the brown and then you're going right into a solid color it looks much more natural it uh it's gonna sh show whoever's looking at that fold that you you know you have a little experience laying that hair coat on. All right, and you again whatever he wants to do. You could feather it out if you want to, but still you know once you have it feathered, stop shaping it and then just start tacking. All right, and this, if this was an Appaloosa, I mean, we can do this with paints too. They do have sometimes little spots within the white. You need to take your color, your body color, and then you can just ball it up, make a slight little puffy ball to it. Again, you don't want, don't mash it, don't make a, you know, a round blob. You wanna keep that kind of natural too. Get it about where you want it. If he listens, he's a little runaway. Get it about where you want it. Let it go. Take your needle and tack it. And see how much more natural that looks than just taking a ball and placing it. like that because if you imagine if you have more irregular spotting all over as opposed to if you have that all over it's gonna look like you took a little paintbrush and was just dabbing on these little circles and, it, and again it won't look natural so that concludes my how-to video to make your very own one-of-a-kind full and I hope you had fun. I, I